Good morning, Rock of Roseville. How's everybody doing this morning? So good to see each one of you. We're so glad you're here. Our family online, we're so glad you're here joining us. We love you guys. And so glad you're here too with us. Can we stand? And uh, I know we're not we're supposed to keep our distance, but could you maybe just give an air high five to someone next to you from a distance? Just give a little hello to someone next to you. It's good to be together as family. Well, we want to get started getting into God's presence. I just want to encourage you. You are loved. You are known by God. He is madly in love with you. And as we begin to worship Him, draw near to Him. He is faithful to be with by the Lord. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your amazing presence, your goodness, Lord. You were so good. So good, and we love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your amazing love. We just bless you. We pray for the person to the left of us, to the right of us. We thank you for the gift that they are. We just pray blessings over them, God. Amazing favor. Jesus, and we pray. If you agree, church, would you shout out amen? Amen. And same for you, church family online. We love you guys. There was the world's moment, the 
So 
Praise the Lord. He works through those who praise Him. Praise the Lord. For our God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. And the things that seem to bind you will serve only to remind you that they are powerless behind you when you praise Him. Let's praise the Lord, God. Jesus. We win. We win. Awesome. Let's do that as we're seated. And we've got warriors over here. If you have kids in that age range, they're ready to go. And let's just give it up for all of our first-time guests this morning, Rock family. And if you're out there in uh, Cyberland, we want to welcome you. If it's your first time to tune in with us, we want to thank you for joining us today. And we just pray that this will be a blessing to you. And for those who are online, as well as those of you who are near here in the service, we have on our app, uh, or on our website, the ability to uh, get connected from, and you can just go log into that and uh, register your attendance with us, and that way we can let you know what's going on with services and all of that. And those of you out there as well, we welcome you here, and you can log on to that and sign in. Well, I got a notification from Bud Browning. How many of you guys know Bud Browning? Yeah, I think everybody knows Bud. There's two or three people out here that know you, Bud. Anyway, Bud is obviously involved with a lot of our outreaches here in the church, and it's that time of year where people are needing coats, and he, said, he called me and said, man, we're short. We don't have that many coats, so I know a lot of you have gotten a notification. There's a basket out there. Some of you brought in some coats this morning, but we need to get some coats for the people in our community that need them. So we want to encourage you to make a note of that. Now, the uh, clothing store, they call it a store, but they don't sell anything out of here, do they? I always give that a hard time about that. But anyway, uh, they're open 9 to 11 on Saturday, right? Bud, 9 to 11? Yeah, and so you can drop them off there Saturday morning or bring them here Saturday morning. But they need them soon, so as soon as you can get them there, that would be great. 
Also, just a side note, we have a facility slash janitor position that is open here. A lot of you got the emails. We've already gotten some uh, uh, submissions for that job. I want to encourage you, if you know anyone or you are interested in that, uh, please email me, mark at rockofroseville.com, and uh, we will uh, get that and process that and see what the Lord does with that. Well, since I've been thinking this week about our worship being an act of defiance, I feel like our giving is kind of that. Our giving is an act of defiance to the things of this world. When we worship God and we say, no matter what the circumstances, I'm going to maintain my giving to the Lord. And I want to encourage you, I I know there's a lot of people that are challenged financially right now in this season. Be defiant in your circumstances. I want to encourage you. That's kind of hard for me to say because my heart goes out to people like that. But the best thing you can do is to not lose heart, but maintain your faith and be consistent with your giving. And that's the best thing for you. That's the best thing for you, to stand in faith, give to God something that is worth. Step out and act on your faith. Be consistent in your love, in your serving, and in your giving. And that gives God something to look at for him to look at to move you forward in your faith. Let's pray over our giving right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you so much, God. We thank you for all of our family that is out there watching us and for our family that is here, God, that we are worshiping together. And we're all in, God. We're all in this. Father, we're all participating with our loving, our giving, and the the things and the ways that we serve. We're all participating in this family. We're all a part of this family, God. And so this is how we do this, God, is with our giving. Lord, may you be glorified in our giving. In Jesus' name. Somebody say it. Awesome. All right. Before Pastor Brandon comes up, we have a video from Pastor Bob Jenkins. Let's watch it. Ready, set, go. So we're going to watch that right now, and then Brandon will come and sing the words. We just had a great meeting here in Estella, and we had some great prayers, and uh, at least some people got set free of some things, and so I just want to encourage you to keep praying, because it's a different place up here, it's a little more dangerous. Uh, we were in a bazaar today, I put my mask on, and uh, people were asking, where is he from? And, uh, they said, Turkey. So, that's my security. Jesus and Turkey. Mm-hmm. Love you guys. Good to rock. God bless you. Good stuff. Pastor Bob always sends these updates. They're just always exciting. Stuff to go in the background, which I love. We're getting live action mission right there. There's no question about it. Um, good morning, Rock and Rose. How are we doing? We are live and well. Yeah, I just want to stay in worship during that time. It was so beautiful. Uh, those online, thank you again for joining us. I'm going to make sure I'm just to It's not you, it's me. It's not you, it's me. Uh, we're going to go center stage here. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining online. Those who are watching, uh, this recorded later, thank you again. But again, us that are here right now, we just want to invite the presence of the Lord in. Uh, as we can say this morning, God's doing something. God's doing something. Right now, our culture, our nation is in a place of despair and victory at the same time. We have people on either side of the political aisle that are either celebrating or mourning and praying right now and believe they're giving out that. Here's the reality. Jesus is king. Jesus is king no matter what. And, and when I told my kids this week, again, now I, I just want to say this, uh, this is a delicate ground for pastors to dance on. Um, I have friends that were very vocal in their support of Joe Biden, pastor friends. Very vocal in their support of Donald Trump. And Jesus is king no matter what. And uh, as we talked about that, I was a bit shocked by some of their aggressive stances uh, so publicly with that. Uh, but for me, as a pastor, I said, you know, God, who do you want to win? Who do you want to win? I had a political preference, but I will not share that. Uh, but that being said, I said, listen, bottom line, whoever wins, Jesus is in charge. The only thing I care about is that whoever wins wins the most. And 
that's really our position as church right now, is to say to honestly, if there's anything that goes, then it gets exposed. But if it's not, and it gets settled in the courts or whatever it is, Jesus is king, and he still reigns supreme, no matter what. That's our position. We actually named this series Jesus 2020 for a reason. He's the one that we have elected. He's the one that has established his position as authority inside of this nation, inside of California, inside of Plaster County. And I'm believing for us to be unwavering in our faith. And here's, here's the reality of it. As, as I pray and go through this season, secularism is at our feet. And personally, I'm honored that we have a church, capital C church, no matter who's in charge, that we have more time to pray the way that secularism and persecution is going. We are not going to. We're not. I, I hate to say this. I just got wind the other day uh, that it's a, a confirmed stat now. One third of all churches will be closed by the end of the year. Um, five years ago, the Lord gave me a very specific word. I did not want it to come to me. Uh, that the church would be experiencing a collapse similar to the financial collapse of 2008. And, um, I knew it would happen, and I was praying and praying and preparing, and, and the Lord said, when you preach a certain message, uh, that time will start. Uh, my parents uh, sent me to call this, and I just went back to the Lord again and preached something that went through my expectations uh, at a certain place, and that was March of 2019. And I knew that time would start, and here we are. And we're one and a half years in, and, and being asked to pray for these children in Africa. Sober minded to pray and ask God for His grace. Um, pray for pastors right now. We need to, we need to. There is no competition. I just know. I have dear friends that lead churches that are extraordinarily successful. There's some that do an amazing work missionally that would not be viewed as successful by an average person. God sees all of them. They all have value. They all have gifts. Pray for churches when you when you walk by. The Lord said it worked in my heart. Hey, brother pastors, but they know how things have been handled uh, behind the scenes. So pray for us. It's his bride, not yours. And we need to believe for him to do a great work in our churches right now in the most middle of a, a lot of things going on. Uh, that being said, I believe at the same time, no matter what happens, God's spirit has a plan. And one of my friends said it very clearly. He said, you know what? My greatest prayer is that no matter who is elected, the church doesn't get apathetic. So you have to understand, it's like either the one you get in gets in there and you, you have a sigh of relief. That's not true. Whoever gets in, we have to have the same fire and contention believing for God's kingdom as we know it does. That's our goal. That's our biblical responsibility. Uh, and with that, uh, I just I want to share this before we, we share this verse and pray here in a minute. Um, God's Spirit showing up in a unique way. And, and just uh, my antenna is up. Uh, our church uh, has a very um, charismatic history. Um, we have seen lots of signs and wonders. Uh, we don't talk about them a lot. Uh, we've seen the mismanagement of those in other churches and where we seek the signs, not the one that gives the signs. And so we're very cautious of that. And so I learned that in Pastor Hansen. Uh, we don't celebrate or worship these signs unless it's needed. Um, but back in 2002 and 2003, I was living with a friend. Uh, one of those was with a manifestation of, of very God's grace in our life. And, and I, as you say that right now, I think it's going to hear um, it was so unprecedented, no one could believe it. Uh, I was in meetings where the entire stage was filled with manifest glory. Um, and the Pharisee was healed of a demon. Uh, there was an undeniable sign that God did in response to the nation. Uh, at one point in my talk, it was very clear sign of the touch so much. Uh, Paige was in service that night, and I didn't miss it. <laughs> so Aaron knows it. So much gold coming out of their skin. The doctors said that it was a material they did not know. Um, but God was still unique. But when you're, when you're 19, you're like, oh, cool. God does this stuff. 20 years later, you're like, hmm. <laughs> that was a unique season. Uh, that being said, uh, I've had friends here and, and I'm very aware of, of God and his destiny in these uh, ways. Thank you. 
Lord bless you as you are doing your thing and your thing is. But again, like me, it's a perception. I'm not overly excited about these things. I kind of think, wow, that seems kind of interesting. And I don't think that that's the main thing. I kind of think like that. I'm talking about the person that I read the Bible and then all of a sudden I see a flash of light and it's like this guy. And uh, he has a very um, different background than I do and the reason he's not Okay, something I need to do. Something just for kids that break wood in there, you know. Um, church, keep on praying for this. Keep on praying for this. Pay attention to the supernatural activity. I saw a word from our, uh, our first thing here that we were praying for for about a year, but we weren't going to do it. No lesions were on their body or organs as the doctors had it taken care of. That is worth shouting the name of Jesus to. Um, my antennas are up. God, do your work. Have your way. And you just need to believe. As you pray, as you, as you fast and believe in your season, let's not go to sleep. Let's believe that God's going to have an outpouring of the Spirit that will rival anything the church could do right now. Uh, this morning, as we go into this, this series, Pastor Buck did a great job last week of, of how to live in the midst of ambiguity. And our anchor verse for this series is Matthew 7. Uh, 24 through 27. If you could sum that uh, verse in your Bible. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says this. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall. Because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This morning, we're going to go through a familiar passage. This is our anchor verse for the series. It's the end of the aptly named Sermon on the Mount. This morning, I want us to go through a section that we know is very familiar. Uh, but my goal this morning is, is to really open it up in a way that challenges uh, kind of our preconceived Christian view. Luckily, I got a voice. There it is. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. This will be our anchor verse today. And then we'll see what we do today. Matthew 5, 1 and 2. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them as follows. Let's pray. Lord, this is your first special word. Holy Spirit, have your way. As you know, we've prepared, we've planned for things, and we've in your word to see any of it. But Jesus, we say yea to you. God, we pray for our meeting. God, bring a spirit of repentance to us. Lord, I ask that we would not feel comfortable in our sin. That Jesus, you would have an outpour of your spirit that would be evident. I think that you do that. And I said the word to bless the mic. I'm so glad you did. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. You are sovereign King. Let every knee bow before the King of Kings. Let every heart confess that Jesus is Lord. God, we ask that you would surrender to us. Thank you. 
in fellowship with Christ. And so whenever you see these literary themes in Scripture, they are always intentional towards the Christian So when Matthew says he went to the mountain, he says it for a reason, for the three things. And so when he says this, it's because God is a new reference in Matthew of three places in Scripture. Thank you. 
to have that is one of the most inferior It's an important thing to do this thing. And I don't know about you, but Jesus speaks up to the Lord. All right to God himself. So that he may best control it to God's will. It's not the only thing. I don't know about you, but I think that's what Paul is doing. It's the ultimate thing to do. Oh, 
world is seems to have broken, but Jesus paid for it. Cross is all he's trying to do. So look at it from an internal standpoint. Jesus is still a man. I will not let my son grow up in a different mindset of oppressing my culture. I will raise him up in scriptures and Christ to overcome all of these things. It's all these stuff to do with this thing that the believers wake up to the Thank 